Lincoln, far from being a man of the people and protector of the Constitution, decided that those who entered into the contract to form the Union now cannot secede from it. The southern states succeed because they are wishing to keep their tax monies at home, and at the time were paying 87% of the federal taxes, which at the time were import and excise taxes. And since the southern states were growing the cotton and tobacco and exporting them, they were paying the lion's share of the uh, tax bill to support the uh, federal government. The only lawful taxes that could be raised were import and excise taxes. There was no uh, income tax at the time. Lincoln declared war and imprisoned 30,000 Northerners who rebelled against the war and denied them their constitutional right of habeas corpus, so much for his worship of the Constitution. Habeas corpus is the demand to know the legitimacy of the charges against you. The federal government institutes the income tax in 1862 and it is revoked in the Supreme Court as being unconstitutional. The feds reinstitute it, but it only applies to federal employees. The soldiers are federal employees. In Lincoln's reign, he declared a state of war and emergency war powers were instituted. The emergency war powers shall go on indefinitely and we are under them still today. Every court in the land is under admiralty law and under the direction of the supreme commander of the military, the president. Admiralty law, where you are guilty until proven innocent, is only supposed to apply to the sea. There is a gold-fringed flag flying in every courtroom signifying the military jurisdiction. The Congress declared the 14th Amendment passed, though it was not constitutionally ratified by three-quarters of the state. The 14th Amendment states, quote, every, everyone born in the U.S and subject to the jurisdiction, quote, not everyone born in the U.S. is subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S. federal government. And the 14th Amendment gave us, quote, civil rights, which the courts declare are privileges and not rights. A citizen is subject, okay? Here we are, we get into the definition of citizen of the United States. It's the 14th Amendment. Um, before ratification of the Amendment 14, there was no legal definition of the term citizen of the United States. The term was used, but only generally. It was not a legal term, it was a conversational term. Okay? After the Civil War, the slaves were freed, but there was no legal basis to recognize them as being, uh, of having any rights. Amendment 14 partially solved that problem. If you're a citizen of the United States, which all the slaves were, then this constitutional amendment imposed on the states the requirement that they must accept that person as a citizen of that state if he's living there. Okay? That's how they, because there was no legal basis from the state's point of view for recognizing these slaves that were now freed because they, they came from out of the country. Even if they were born here, they were from out of the country. So to get them accepted. But look what happened. What happened was that the slaves were privately owned and they got released into what amounted to public ownership, right? Citizens of the United States, they're subject to the jurisdiction. They are now publicly owned. But what a neat deal. Isn't it nice to have slaves for whom you are not responsible to feed them? You're not responsible to clothe them. You're not responsible to house them and yet you have control of them. Now, white people uh, were not slaves, generally. There were white slaves, by the way. Don't get me wrong on that one. But generally, the people of the United States were not slaves. They were sovereign in their capacity. So now the thing is, is over the decades, from the 1850s to the 1950s, as they redid the curriculum and they pulled all that information out, what did they do? They transferred the people out of the c capacity of people and into the capacity of citizen of the United States. That's what they taught you in the schools. So that now they're wrapping the whole population up as one great big supply of slaves. Okay? Public ownership. So Let's see, here we go.
free the slave was the rallying cry combined with the civil war that resulted in the Amendment 14. Amendment 14 created a new class of person called citizen of the United States. Any ex-slave could now claim citizenship. And by the way, so could any of the people if they chose to do so. Amendment 14 made possible the voluntary relinquishment, relinquishment of personal sovereignty. So notice this. Now to qualify for citizenship, you have to be born or naturalized and subject to the jurisdiction. If you meet that qualification, you are now a citizen of the United States. But look what they do now. They don't tell you that part of it. They don't teach you that in the schools. What they do teach you is they teach you to say you are a citizen of the United States. Pick anybody walking down the street and ask them, are you a citizen of the United States? And assuming he is, he will say yes. You know, not knowing that there's another class of human being in this country. So as a citizen of the United States, uh, if you say you're a citizen of the United States, what are you saying? You're saying, I'm your subject. I'm subject to you, the government, or the United States, right? So that's the deal. Rights cannot be denied, nor taxed, nor taken away or infringed upon. This is ostensibly to free the slaves, but if there's no 14th Amendment, the slaves would just become sovereign like the rest of the, of the people. There would be no discrimination in status. The Supreme Court also decided about 1868 to declare corporations can have all the rights of people. Quote, Mr. Lincoln stated, quote, corporations have been enthroned and an era of corruption in high places will follow and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until all wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. He, quoted, he stated that in 1864, a bit prophetic, I would say, and considering how much he did to subjugate the people, it's amazing that you know, he could come out with a statement like that. Corporations were made into persons by the 1886 Supreme Court case called Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific and gave artificial persons almost the same rights as natural persons or simply a fictional entity, a corporation, that only exists in your mind or on paper could now sue in court and possess similar rights to a flesh and blood person. In Black's Law, quote, person can be flesh and blood or corporate entity. And this is an important point to consider. When you start thinking about corporations as having no eyes to see nor hands to sign, how does a corporation present itself in court? It can't. The corporation has no authority to speak because it can't speak. The only person that can speak is an agent of the corporation. So how does the corporation, what's the purpose of the corporation? It's to separate liability from those people that are employed by it and use it from having any liability towards you. Because they can say, hey, you sue the corporation, but you can't sue me. Quote, don't interfere with anything in the Constitution. That must be maintained, for it is the only safeguard of our liberties. Now you'd think that Thomas Paine said that, but no, it was Abraham Lincoln once again. Lincoln issued his own money printed by the Treasury called Greenbacks, and John Wilkes Booth killed him while his Secret Service guards mysteriously left their post. In 1864, the National Banking Act was born, and for the first time it states that a bank can create money from a person's promise to pay being deposited into an account. In 1878, and here we have the actual page of the 41st Congress, Session 3, Chapter 61 and 62 of 1871, and as you will see down near the middle here, this is where over here on the right side. February 21st, 1871, District of Columbia constituted a body corporate for municipal purposes. Now why on earth would they need to create a corporation to run Washington, D.C.? What did they do for the first 90 years? 
let everybody run amok there.